Hello, my name is Milan Plžík and I'm Site Reliability Engineer at Grafana Labs. Today we will be talking about production readiness review as the means of providing evidence supporting SLOs. SLOs define objectives in declarative, metric-based approach. This is a really valuable tool for reasoning about services reliability, but especially for low mileage services, it's hard to get confidence in how defensible the SLO is. Issues such as unreliable backup restore process, service being bottlenecked on a third-party component and similar might easily slip under the radar. This will start to manifest or even get introduced as the service grows over time and it will adversely affect the SLO. Going bottom-up, these issues might be discovered by analyzing the product in question. There is a prior art for this. Google's production readiness review is a process that engages SRE teams with product teams giving the product team a feedback from experienced engineers outside the team. However, at Grafana Labs, we don't have separate SRE teams adopting production services, and thus, the process has to be tailored for our purposes. Let's get started. There are three important bits to the process. The PRR checklist contains a list of topics to be discussed in the PRR. Product stakeholders are engineers representing the reviewed product. The PRR lead is an experienced engineer outside of the product team that will be driving the process. We maintain a generic PRR checklist that goes into details of what are the current engineering best practices here at Grafana Labs. The PRR checklist goes into different areas, for instance, architecture, scaling, or CI. There, it tries to address the most common pitfalls, such as false tolerance, performance bottlenecks, day-to-day -day operations, and similar. To be completely honest, it's not a literal checklist. Answers are provided in preform fields. The questions are intentionally descriptive and there is no single right answer. At the beginning of the review process, the product stakeholders honestly fill in the answers. Let's have a look at an example item from our PRR checklist. Firstly, there is a broad question that defines the topic to be discussed. After that, we're providing the product team more technical details about the question and examples of what to look for. The product team is expected to go over the services architecture and provide the necessary input. In any doubts, they can always reach out back to the PRR lead. After filling in the checklist, product stakeholders start consultations with PRR lead. Going through the checklist, both parties discuss the design choices and try to evaluate any possible risks involved. The product teams should start fixing the issues as soon as they are reported. The review is considered done after a list of issues is finalized. However, to actually pass the PRR, the identified risks needs to be sufficiently addressed by the engineering team. The output also serves as a feedback for improvement of the PRR process. PRR should be done before the product gets generally available. Starting PRR early during the design phase might help to significantly reduce the number of issues that needs to be fixed later. Doing the PRR on existing products definitely makes sense as well. Both products and the PRR checklist evolve. Periodic re-evaluation might help to catch some issues early. Even more, a fresh look at an old and battle-proven design might lead to improvement suggestions that have been missed previously. How does the PRR at Grafana Labs work? The process is not a mandatory tick box exercise. Rather, we strive to frame PRR as something that brings added value to the service and works toward reducing the operational load. We have started doing PRR at the end of 2020. For the start, we have canaried the process on three different products opting for short, weekly, or bi-weekly meetings with the product teams. PRR helped us to identify issues in our products, but also in the PRR checklist itself. During the canary phase of PRR, we noticed few interesting cases. There was a service where the upgrade process would need downtime by design, an amount that would have burned most of the error budget already. Another interesting one, was a service that would have no 24-7 on core rotation. Even with the team being vigilant during their work time, which is not really a viable strategy on its own, you should have a pager. There would be gaps when the service could be down without anyone noticing. Also, we noticed issues with the PR checklist itself. 
it was written in a generic customer-facing cloud service in mind. One size doesn't fit all, though. For a mostly internal sandbox service composed of multiple plugins, things such as release or rate limiting might be viewed in a different light. Concluding, the PRR process was a nice experience from both product and review perspective. We have discovered some interesting issues that need to be addressed, be it in the reviewed products or in the PRR process itself. There's a lot of things to learn, and we are already looking forward to the next round of the reviews. Is it worth it? Definitely. In exchange for some time, you'll get more confidence in the service's current state and possibly even identify and fix important issues. To help others to jumpstart the process, we will be publishing our PRR checklist soon. The earlier the review is done, the better. Let's start now.